Mr. Zoe begins today. I am so, so, so excited for this many hours later all right so i am coming back to designing for easter much later in the day this is after all the kiddos have gone to bed on the day just sort of got wrapped up with the kiddos so i am coming here with my tea this is my me time which is so nice to have especially at the end of the day i am pulling some books for inspiration and inspiration can be found anywhere right pinterest your friends the world all sorts of good good resources here so i'm taking little designs from this book and from that book and then i'm putting them in the computer and i'm coming up with my own unique design and that is all she wrote for this day good morning do you like the ensemble is that nice my hair is in transition the transition phase if you know you know so Yesterday, I got the design together, and today the goal is to get the design printed out and put on the uh, the bodice so I can you know, have hand sewing when those opportunities arise. Meanwhile, if we really get going today, that's right, Daisy. She's over here playing. Can you see her? There she is. Um, meanwhile, uh, if we really just have an, um, like a, a, a static day productivity wise, get all the stuff done. There she is, her little face. That's right. We can start doing some machine sewing. Oh my gosh. We will just be ahead of the game this Easter, knock on wood. Oh, and we do have wood now. Daisy. We do have wood now. Isn't that nice? I know. You've seen my other videos, you've likely seen this half wall and it's like been not complete for two years. And now that Daisy and Henry are in preschool and Everly is starting to nap in her crib, we're starting to get stuff done, like finished up around the house, these little projects. Not pretty. Anyhow. So here we are printing out our design and then I will take that over to the fabric. Isn't this beautiful fabric? Uh, it's just yummy, yummy goodness. It is Swiss Batiste in all its glory. It is one of my favorite things to use, especially for Easter. It just shines for heirloom sewing. So here we have the embroidery design that I made the day earlier, and I am just rough eyeballing this. <laughs> yeah, it's just rather rough, and you know, clipping it and ripping her along the grain, so I have fabric that's you know more or less the width that I want and then I can take that and go to tracing I've got the kiddos in the background over the half wall and it's nice that they're starting to grow up and not be attached to me all the time it's very bittersweet there's definitely moments where it's really nice and a breath of fresh air and then there are times where it's all the bitter of bittersweet and I'm realizing that Everly is our last and there are no more babies coming so yeah every bit of bittersweet I can't I can't phrase it any other way so here we are tracing out this design and once that is traced I've or at least once it's traced on the one side, I can flip her over and trace to the other side. Since it is flipped over, it's going through extra, you know, bit of paper. So it's not as easy, but not extra bit of paper, but on the wrong side of paper. So I get out my lap board and start tracing away again. So I try to hoop these up. I know that my hoops should be wrapped. I do have videos on wrapping your hoops and the benefits of doing that. Did not like that first hoop. So here I've got a hodgepodge of a mess of a wrap of a hoop. Oh my goodness. Um, and it's this hoop didn't have a screw like a slot for a screwdriver so that was out because not only should you have your hoops wrapped but you should also use a screwdriver to be able to pull everything as tight as can be and get everything really snug in that hoop so once i discovered that that hoop went in the trash i don't know i don't know so then we're on to our next hoop it's like the goldilocks little story of hoops right here and these hoops go with, or sorry, there's a set of three and they go with one of my stands. I get asked a ton about my hoop stands and I do have an Amazon storefront so you can go over there and check them out. They go in and out of stock quite frequently, especially with the world being on fire. So 
I try to get them linked as best as I can, but I love having these stands, especially if you're under a sleeping little one. They're great, but even not, they just give you your hands back so you're able to like not have to hold the fabric and it's just, it's a more enjoyable experience. So that is Sweet Daisy's dress and it is being set aside and I am now working on Audrey's dress. So we are back to the computer because I want to get a design together. I'm thinking of like a dot sort of pattern if you will so I'm making it up as I go along but this is based off of a dress that I made for myself years and years ago long before children I've been making dresses for myself that's really my love of sewing came from was making dresses for myself and back in high school I made hundreds I'm not even exaggerating I made hundreds of dresses and that's why I can make a dress with basically my eyes closed like dresses come so natural to me because I've made I think all the mistakes <laughs> so let's get that design out and it's kind of like a pattern within a pattern I'm really excited to embroider this and see how it comes together that is a fun thing for me so I'm here in my little sewing corner turning on my lamp I'm gonna be lighting a candle like all the things that make you happy even just ripping the fabric sounds glorious it just makes you happy you look the more I do this, the more I want to sew things that are absolutely unique. Not that there's anything wrong with ready-made. I think ready-made, it can be so darling and sweet as well, and I enjoy doing that. But the more I get old, like the older I get and the less time that I have, the more I just want to make everything completely unique. Does that make any sense? Like, not that I'm talking <laughs> anything bad about ready-made, because I'm really not. But um, yeah, if I can pour some hand embroidery onto it, the more the better. You can hear my cell phone go off and I do not go to grab it. I go onto social media when I want and I don't go onto it when I don't want. And that's something else I have learned from being on social media for, for years is that it will take hold of you if you let it so no offense to anybody but yeah i do i do it as i please and here we are with the trace design i am so excited for these designs so right now they will just sit there in their hoops and be ready for me when i have a chance and now last but certainly not least is sweet everly's everly's dress i'm probably the most excited for it's her first easter dress it is my last time doing a first easter dress at least for my kiddos and here we are sitting down together like i said bittersweet uh, it's nice going back to it but as she gets older she some days she really wants to be baby worn and other days she wants nothing to do with it who would you like to hold She is teething, so there's that. The poor thing's got five teeth already through, and it looks like she has another five or six coming, so it's been a little rough. That sounds so glorious. Ripping organza, it is one of the best things, right? And this stuff is exquisite. The border on this, the embroidery design, like just the embroidery work, it is so pretty. If you're somebody who wants something that's all unique, but you don't want to put the handwork into it, this is a great choice. So I am rolling her up on a dowel. You can see I'm really just watching me seeing what I'm doing. Did I do this right? Oh, Jesus. I need more spoons. Okay. So this is the right side up. is exquisite so this is a great choice and then obviously it's see-through so now I'm taking some Nola if ever they will let me <laughs> and I'm deciding what length it should be because I want it just underneath of that scallop edge I want the scallop edge to kind of be on its own and I know it's gonna flare out some 
I'm also not striving for for perfection. I think perfection is overrated. Sure, you should try to do your best and make everything tidy and and all of that jazz, but come on, y'all. Perfection, in my opinion, life's too short for it. If it's going to cause you anxiety and stress, what's the point, right? It's handmade. It's handmade with love, and that is the important thing. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. So I rip it your length, and then we can find another toy. Maybe that will suffice for a while. And we can get to rolling this up on a dowel because the idea is I'm going to pleat both of these together. I've done this a, only a couple times before. One time comes to mind is Audrey's first birthday dress. Not birthday dress. It was a, it was a birthday bubble and it had a smock collar and I pleated the collar and the bubble together. So I'm just rolling it up. It's not on a dowel, it's on a curtain rod since I only have one dowel. So I'm just trying to make it work. Again, my phone is going off and I am not grabbing it. This is my happy time, my happy place. I'm enjoying it, all the bittersweet moments with Everly as she reaches for this, that, and the other, and I'm trying to entertain her. There's definitely moments where I'm glad she's the last one, and then there's other moments where she snuggles up to okay. me and I am bitter about it, so. I can't say in another any other way but bittersweet. And after the kids go to bed, I am coming back <laughs> without a baby <laughs> because pleading up two at a time, it's definitely doable, but it's something I'd rather do without a little one attached to me, <laughs> reaching for all the things. So here I'm trying to wiggle both of them through, but there's not enough room. So I take out my dowel and I keep the NOLA on the curtain rod since that's thinner and I'm just gonna make it work and it will be just fine. Nothing to stress out about, right? Now this maneuver here, it's like, I don't know, it's like you're detonating a bomb or something. Okay, I know that's, that's overkill, but really. I have realized that I need more pleats, you know, for the design that I'm going for. So everything is loaded up. I've got some pressure on those rods from the fabric being squished in there. And I'm taking out that, that rod so I can put more pleating needles in there. I know that's overkill, but you get what I'm saying. Your heart kind of races a little bit and you sort of just hold your breath. <laughs> and this is the fun part pleating her up and seeing all those plump pleats with the two fabrics coming together and imagining the design and this is going to be a dress that is pleated. I think I'm going to have one side seam but all the rest of it's going to be continuous. I love eliminating seams whenever possible. I've been doing that for years and years. It just makes my heart pitter patter with all the joy. I don't know what it is about. If I can eliminate a side seam or a back seam, I am all about it. I like leap for joy. <laughs> And you can see how pretty are these pleats. I'm so excited for this dress, especially with it being my last first Easter dress for one of my girls. How are we here? I don't know. I didn't think this day was ever going to come, but we're here. We've got four beautiful, healthy children. I'm so grateful for them. I'm excited for Easter. That was our first week of Easter sewing. Go check out my fabrics from Easter. If you need some inspiration on getting fabrics, it is not too late. Go check out that video and get your fabrics today. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you have any questions, of course, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.